Yo, what's going on people? So in today's video I gotta explain what asynchronous code is in JavaScript. Synchronous is code that executes line by line consecutively in a sequential manner. Synchronous code waits for an operation to complete. For example, if I were to use console.log, let's pretend we're performing some task. It doesn't matter what the task is. We will pretend that task one is complete, then we'll move on to task two, then task three. All this code is synchronous. We're executing this code line by line. We can't move on to task two until we complete task one. There is an order of events that we need to follow. It's code that waits for an operation to complete. Now, on the other hand, asynchronous code allows multiple operations to be performed concurrently without waiting. Asynchronous code doesn't block the execution flow and allows the program to continue. Imagine that asynchronous code is kind of like a time traveler. A time traveler can move out of the flow of time, but the rest of the world continues, time resumes normally. Asynchronous code doesn't block the execution flow, time moves on, with or without it. Asynchronous code is typically found with input-output operations, network requests, and fetching data, anything that could take an indeterminate amount of time. So for example, I will use the set timeout function. After three seconds, I will execute a function. Let's console.log, let's say task one. We'll change these three lines to be task two, task three, task four. I will finish task one after 3000 milliseconds. Now check this out. We've already completed task two, three, and four, but task one finished last. That's because set timeout is one of many asynchronous functions. The rest of the program isn't going to wait around for it to complete. It runs concurrently with the rest of my code. That's why task one was completed at the end and not at the beginning. There's different ways to handle asynchronous code. We're already familiar with callbacks, but there's also promises as well as async and await. We still need to discuss these topics in the future, but we're already familiar with callbacks. If it's crucial that task two through four finishes after task one, we can use a callback. We don't necessarily know how long this asynchronous function is gonna take. What we could do in this example is create a function. Function, func1 meaning function one. I will execute this code within function one. Then we will accept a callback as an argument. Then we'll have function func2 to do some synchronous code. Function 2 will have tasks 2 through 4. After task 1 is complete, I will invoke my callback to function 2. So with an arrow function, I have more than one line of code. I need to add a set of curly braces. After task 1, I will invoke that callback. So then if I call function one, I have to pass a callback to function two. So now function one is asynchronous, but I need this synchronous code to execute after task one is complete. And now that should work. One, two, three. There it is. We have task one, which is asynchronous, followed by task two, task three, and task four. So by using callbacks, that's one way in which we can handle asynchronous code, but we still need to discuss promises, async, and await, which are future topics. All right, everybody, so that is what asynchronous code is. Synchronous code executes line by line consecutively in a sequential manner. Asynchronous code allows multiple operations to be performed concurrently without waiting. Asynchronous code doesn't block the execution flow and allows the rest of the program to continue. Asynchronous code is commonly found with input-output operations, network requests, and fetching data, usually anything that takes an indeterminate amount of time. And well, everybody, that's what asynchronous code is in JavaScript.